Every year, new TVs are released while old ones are discontinued in a cycle. These new TVs are marketed with new terms and fancy sounding technologies, but do they really hold up to the hype? Well, we bought the brand new 55 inch 2020 Samsung Q60T QLED. So in this video, we'll go over our test results to see if the new dual LED backlight technology really results in an upgrade for you. Hi, I'm Daniel from Ratings.com, where we help people find the best product for their needs. Remember to subscribe to our channel or check out our website if you like this kind of thing. In this video, we'll start by looking at the design and inputs of the Q60T and then move on to our test results for the picture quality. We'll also look at the motion handling, input lag and sound. Throughout this video, we'll be comparing to the Q60T's naming predecessor from last year, the Q60R, as well as what might be considered the closest model, the RU8000. If you'd like to skip straight to our test results, then see the links in the description below. We bought the 55 inch Q60T, but it's also available in a wide range of sizes, from 43 inches up to 85 inches. We expect these other sizes to have very similar picture quality and performance, but obviously as the sizes get bigger and bigger, you'll need a bigger table, a more durable wall mount, or planning permission to knock down a few walls and open up your living room. The design of the Q60T is very similar to other Samsung TVs. In fact, it's very similar to other TVs in general. There's very few TVs that stand out as noticeably different, outside of more concept models like LG's rollable OLED or Samsung's Cero TV. The borders of this TV are very thin, which looks good, as they aren't distracting. The wide set stand supports the TV well, and like some of Samsung's previous TVs, the legs secure themselves when inserted, so there's no need for screws, which is a nice touch. For the on-screen controls, there's a single button under the Samsung logo at the front. It allows basic controls like turning the TV on or off or changing inputs, but requires a series of short or long presses, so isn't particularly intuitive to use. Moving around to the side, the TV is thin and looks good. It sits close to the wall when mounted, which is nice. Now, on the rear of the TV are the inputs. There are three HDMI inputs, one fewer than last year, a tuner, two USBs, and there's actually a composite input so you can connect up your old combo player for those VCR tapes in the basement. Now, the Q60T is supposed to come with clips for cable management, similar to older Samsung models, but for some reason we can't find them, so they might have been missing from the package. Here's an example from last year's Q60R though, and it's a simple design, but works well to keep wires out of sight. Now we'll move on to the picture quality. As always, check out our website for an updated comparison with new models as we buy and test them. So first up, the contrast ratio. The contrast ratio is the relative brightness of white versus dark areas in a scene. It is generally considered one of the most important aspects of picture quality, as a high contrast ratio helps dark scenes to appear more detailed without details getting lost in the gray. Now, this is one of the areas that the dual LED backlight technology of the Q60T is supposed to help with. On most TVs, the backlight is fixed to a certain color temperature. The only way to produce a different color light is to filter out components, such as blocking some of the red light to produce a cooler or bluer image, or blocking some of the blue light to produce a warmer or redder image. As some light is blocked, the overall brightness reduces a bit. Now, the advantage of a dual LED backlight is that the two types of LEDs have a different color temperature. Instead of blocking light and reducing the brightness to change the color temperature, the relative intensity of the two different LEDs can be adjusted with no hit to the brightness. This is a bit of a simplification because for contrast you care about the black level as well, but the result is that the contrast ratio should be higher in theory. Now in practice, this also seems to be the case as the native contrast is one of the highest we've tested. It's just over 10% higher than last year's model, which could be explained by this technology. Unfortunately, the Q60T doesn't have local dimming to further improve the perceived contrast of real scenes. But this is expected, as Samsung tends to limit these features to higher-end models, and the Q60R didn't have it either. Let's move on to grey uniformity. Our grey uniformity test checks for issues with the panel where different pixels are all supposed to display the exact same color, but may not. This can result in distracting areas known as the dirty screen effect, which is especially noticeable when watching sports or playing video games. The Q60T has a good uniformity, which is about expected, as edge-lit TVs like this one actually tend to perform better than many higher-end TVs with full-array local dimming. Having said that, grey uniformity is one aspect of the panel that can vary between units, so yours might perform differently. If you come across a panel that doesn't correspond to our results, then let us know in the comments down below. Now for the viewing angles. 
Good viewing angles are important if you've got wide seating so that the image remains accurate when viewed from the side. Like most TVs with VA-type panels, the viewing angles of the Q60T aren't good. At an angle, the black level raises quickly and the image looks washed out. This is also about the same as last year's Q60R. For those of you in a bright room, good reflection handling is important to cut the amount of glare. The Q60T is about typical of most mid-range TVs. It has a semi-gloss finish which diffuses reflections a bit across the screen, and coupled with a great SDR peak brightness, which we'll talk about later, it should be fine for most rooms. It may be hard to see the image in a very bright room or with direct glare from a window though. Now as mentioned earlier, the SDR peak brightness is great and should be more than bright enough for most situations. There's no local dimming, so the brightness doesn't really change with most window sizes, but the TV does have frame dimming or CE dimming, which dims the whole screen during dark scenes. Some people don't like this as it can crush details and unfortunately can't be disabled. Now, if you watch HDR content, then the ability to produce brighter regions of the image is important to produce impactful highlight detail. Unfortunately, while the Q60T supports HDR, it can't produce bright specular highlights, and at below 500 nits, it also can't really make HDR content stand out. Also important for HDR is the ability to take advantage of the wider color spaces that content can be mastered in. The Q in Q60T refers to QLED, which is the name Samsung uses for their Quantum Dot TVs. This Quantum Dot technology allows for more vivid colors, and the Q60T doesn't disappoint. While it can't produce as wide of a color gamut as some higher-end QLED TVs, it's almost exactly the same as last year's Q60R, and about what we expect. So now on to our motion tests. Unlike the Q60R of last year, all sizes of the Q60T have a 60Hz panel, rather than a higher refresh rate 120Hz panel. We'll talk about the effect of this later on in the video. First up for motion, the response time, which is an average of the time it takes for the TV to transition from one color to the next as it displays a sequence of frames. The Q60T has a good response time, but there is some visible blur trail in fast moving scenes, as can be seen in the smearing on the left of the photo of our moving logo. The backlight of the TV also flickers at 600 Hz, which is such a high frequency that it isn't noticeable to most people and can't be seen in our moving logo photo. We did find on full screen uniform colors, it causes a kind of rolling effect though, which is strange. Now, the flicker of the backlight can also be adjusted for those who want a clearer image. When sending a 60 Hz signal and in movie mode, the LED clear motion option can be enabled for a 60 Hz flicker. This results in a clearer image with less persistence blur. You can see some duplication though, caused by strobe crosstalk, so it isn't as good as some other TVs. Unfortunately at the moment, there appears to be a bug with the firmware, as the LED clear motion option doesn't work in game mode for low input lag. When in game mode, the backlight flickers at 120Hz, and enabling LED clear motion doesn't adjust this frequency. As a result, more duplication is noticeable, and the image is less clear. This may be fixed in a future firmware though. Now, speaking of game mode, it works well to reduce the input lag of the TV. For most signals, it's under 10 milliseconds, which is great and close to the theoretical minimum at 60 Hz. This is great for fast paced games, as it feels very responsive. As mentioned before, it can't display a 120 Hz signal though due to the 60 Hz panel, which is a bit disappointing. Unfortunately, unlike last year's RU8000 or Q60R, this TV doesn't support variable refresh rates. This aspect is definitely a downgrade if you plan to game on a new Xbox with VRR or from a PC. So now for the smart platform. This TV has the familiar Tizen OS, although the 2020 version has a slightly simpler interface and a dark mode instead of the white background. Overall, it's very easy to use and works well, and the familiar Samsung smart remote is also great. We did experience a few bugs during testing, which is detailed in our written review linked down below, but we bought the TV as soon as it was available, so it's unfortunately fairly normal for all TVs that the problems will get worked out over the next few months, and we don't expect it to be a problem for most people. Now, the sound quality of the Q60T is about typical of most TVs. It has a decent frequency response and can get fairly loud, but for better sound as always, a dedicated speaker system or even a soundbar is the way to go. So overall, the Q60T is a good TV that performs well for most uses. At the same time, it's a bit disappointing though, because it is a downgrade from the Q60R in a few areas, most notably the 60Hz panel and lack of variable refresh rate support, both of which may be important for gamers. 
Otherwise, it performs similarly though, and the dual LED backlight does appear to improve the contrast a bit. So that's it. What do you think of the 2020 Samsung Q60T? If you were to choose between the 2019 and 2020 model, which do you prefer? You can check out all of the measurements on our website. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become an insider on the website for access to our latest results first. Also, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best product for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. Thank you for watching and see you next time.